Now here we start the outlets that are serving our kitchen countertop. And the first outlet we have is a GFCI receptacle. GFCI is a code requirement for wet and damp locations. It is monitoring the difference between hot and neutral. And if there's a current imbalance, more than five milliamps, then this device will trip at the device. You'll see a test and a reset button. It'll trip at the device to cut power to anything that's plugged into it for safety purposes. In this case, we're not only protecting this location with the GFCI, but you'll see we've got two sets of conductors, two cables coming into this box. The first is marked with a flag of black tape and um, safe, made safe with wire nuts is our line side. That's coming from the panel. That's our power source. The second is our load size, load side and that's going to the next device downstream. GFCIs cost about $18 at a retail hardware store, and so utilizing one GFCI to protect multiple locations is a cost-effective approach. I'm gonna start with my grounding conductors, my grounds, and I'm going to clear them from the other wires. I happen to know with this GFCI, that the ground is located at the bottom of the device as we'll be orienting it. We're gonna orient all the devices in the house in the same fashion with grounds at the bottom. I'm going to use a mechanical connection called a crimp sleeve. This is a very slim copper sleeve or short tube. And I'm gonna slide it far up the wire. I'm using my diagonal crimping pliers and I'm gonna put pretty close to a death grip crimp on that. I want that to be a very secure connection. And in this case, I'm going to cut off the conductor that's not of choice. And again, these are diagonal crimping pliers. So I have cuts at the end and I have two crimp methods here closer to the axis. Now I'm going to strip all of my conductors. Code requirement is that I must have at least three inches extending from the face of the finished surface, three inches of conductor. And so I never want to cut my wires back past that, even though with this, a thick device, a, a deep device like a GFCI, it becomes cumbersome to force five number 12 conductors back into a box, as well as the full depth of the GFCI. It, it is necessary to leave um, enough conductor for serviceability. Now one thing you'll find is that this is a little, little bit different. The GFCI terminates with a straight conductor. We're not gonna curl the end of the conductors and I'm not gonna strip back quite as much either. I wanna leave um, just five eighths to three quarters of an inch of wire. There is a strip guide on the GFCI so that when the wire is fully inserted, there's no bare conductor remaining. Like I said, I've got a line side and that's been successfully marked on the rough in with a flag of colored tape, not white or gray or green. Those designate neutral and grounds. And I've got on the back of my GFCI labeled line and load. For this entire project, we're using Hubble devices. Hubble is a leader in quality. I'm gonna insert into any, either one of my two holes my hot line side conductor. And it's gonna be snug, not death grip. I want a good quality electrical connection. But again, you'll strip out an $18 device if you put too much force on it. I'm still using my number one square drive. It's the same device I'm gonna be using, same tool I'm gonna to be using throughout. Now I've got my load side. I'm gonna match. Not all GFCIs are created equal. Um, the configuration on the back can be different. You'll need to pay attention to your particular device. But in this case, I've got a brass screw. I need to loosen the load side. I'm gonna insert it such that there's no bare conductor remaining that could accidentally come into contact with my grounding conductor. Tighten it down. Repeat that process for the load side neutral. in my ground. There's a grounding plate for the ground and it does not wrap on this particular GFCI, this Hubble series GFCI. So I have a snug connection on everything. My GFCI is going to be in this vertical position with the ground terminal at the bottom. 
For reference, this is the ground terminal, this is the hot terminal, the smaller of the two on the right corresponds to the hot conductors. This is my neutral terminal, corresponds to my neutral conductors on the left, and this device is, it comes in the tripped position. Once we energize the GFCI, we'll push the reset button, and if everything's wired correctly and the breaker's on, then both top and bottom receptacle outlets will become live. All right, in this case, I've just paused to notice that my box is recessed, and this device is gonna receive quite a bit of force when a plug is inserted and pulled out. And what I don't want to happen is that GFCI outlet to have any play in the wall. And so I'm gonna use 632 screws to support the, the yoke of the device securely to the box. Okay, so I have two 632 nuts in my hand. I'm going to put those onto my 6-32 screw. Spin it on with my finger. Not going to tighten it up just yet. I'm going to do the same top and bottom. And again, I want to watch that ground so that it is tucked furthest back. I want to watch all my conductors so none of them are being pinched or squeezed. I'm going to get the top started. Get the bottom started. And those nuts are loose, but this backer nut, I'm gonna slip my pinky in there and I'm gonna to begin to tighten it down. And what I want is I want the yoke of the device to tighten to my nut so there's no play. And in this case, I've not compressed and damaged my drywall. I've got a secure connection to the box. This is a very inexpensive way to overcome the challenge of a box that is recessed slightly too far inside the wall. And then I wanna match the depth of the yoke at the top and the bottom so the device is not caved into the wall um, in either a top to bottom fashion or a side to side. I don't want it to be cocked. If the device was cocked for one reason or another, I use my mini channel locks, very carefully grab the side of the device without scarring it, and I can straighten it up with light pressure. Again, I'm gonna leave my screws in the horizontal position, clean my finished work. If this was a finished wall with final paint, I use Mr. Clean's Magic Eraser and very lightly, not scrubbing, very lightly clean up any fingerprints left behind. Best practice is to wash your hands periodically so you're not leaving smudges on the wall.